Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got some interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with Nexilla, Rubial Mosquera, who is officially, just like Samson Dauda, a part of the Oxygen crew. I did dollar the report this news, but I wasn't sure how official it is. And now it is official, Rubial just posted a photo, he's over there and he's gonna stay there and prep for the Dubai Pro. Now as far as the other guys doing the Dubai Pro, Andrew Jack is not gonna be doing that show. One of my friends who lives in Dubai as well met him and asked him and apparently he's not doing Dubai Pro, which I also thought based on his conditioning right now. And as far as Nexilla, he's probably right now, he's the favorite to win that show and he's most likely gonna win it. Now as far as how much sense does it make for Rubiel to go over there and to prep from there, I mean we already know he has a coach, a new coach, so he's not exactly gonna be coached by the Oxygen crew, but those guys will have a say. They always did. Dennis James spoke about this when Big Ramy was being prepped by other coaches, he was also listening to like 12 other guys from Kuwait. So how much sense does it make? I mean... The thing with Rubial is, as you guys know and can see, it's not muscle, it's not size that is an issue. I mean, I'm not saying he has an issue, but what he can improve on is, you know, balance of the physique, maybe conditioning, maybe posing, stuff like that. And the guys who go to Kuwait, they usually go over there to build mass, to get bigger. Which, again, is not something Rubial needs. The other thing why guys go over there is to stay focused. Oxygen Gym is, from what I gathered, basically a training camp. You go over there, you have a trainer, you train, you eat their food, you sleep, you rest, and you get the best quality supplements. And that's it, there isn't much else you can do over there, so that is the thing with Rubiel. You guys saw that after that Prague Pro, he wasn't exactly the most focused bodybuilder ever, like he was resting, he was traveling, he was partying, and now all he can and will do is bodybuilding. And with a new coach, I think this will play out quite well. As long as the guys from Kuwait are not mixing themselves too much and they let the coach do the work. And all they actually do is simply provide the best conditions possible for Rubiel to do his best. And it seems like at this point they decided, I mean Auction Gym, they decided to get all the big freaks, all the big names and they started with, you know, third best bodybuilder in the world, Samson Dauda, and now they have, like, the biggest freak of them all, Rubio Mosquera. So, I guess Oxygen Gym is back at it. They made some really good champions back in the day. Lately, they haven't been that active, but it seems like they're coming back. And I think getting Samson and Rubio was a really smart play. And I don't know about Samson, but I think Rubio, I think that's gonna play out very well. I think this guy is gonna make some more progress and the freak he is already, it's gonna be very interesting to see him, what he can bring to Dubai Pro and then eventually at the Mr. Olympia, I think he's gonna be on that stage this year and that's gonna be very exciting to see. Alright, next up we got uh, Muhammad Shaban with some bad news, he's gonna be out of Pittsburgh Pro guest posing. Uh, and this is probably the end of his career, not because he got sick, but because he's skipping Pittsburgh Pro guest posing. You guys saw what happened to Big Ramy after he missed it. Just joking, of course. I mean, I don't know what Big Ramy's excuse was. I don't think there was anything. But Mohammed has a good excuse. So basically he says, what began as what I thought was just a bad case of the flu turned out to be something far more serious. My body began to shut down and I experienced excruciating pain in my lower back followed by a loss of sensation in my legs. It was terrifying. I've been in and out of two hospitals and urgent care facilities, almost hopeless to find a solution. I spent this week in a hospital receiving intense care for an infection that triggered my organs to shut down. It's been a challenging journey, but I'm finally st starting to see signs of improvement. And then he says to everyone who was expecting to see me at Pittsburgh Pro guest posing this weekend, I'm truly sorry. Unfortunately, I won't be able to fulfill those commitments. My deepest apologies to the man and family and everyone expecting to see me on stage. However, if the doctors discharge me soon and allow me to travel, I still plan to travel to Pittsburgh Pro to support as a spectator. So there you go guys, Mohamed Shaban is not gonna be able to guest pose, something nasty happened to him, some sort of an infection that caused his organs to shut down, it sounds pretty bad, I don't know how or why this happened, but 
he's definitely gonna be out of Pittsburgh Pro, hopefully he will recover soon, uh, it's important that he apologized to the Romanian family, because again, again, you guys saw what happened to Big Ramy after he missed that guest posing, so hopefully this will not affect Muhammad's career, what happened happened, he had no control over it, it is what it is, hopefully those guys are not gonna take this as an insult or something like that, and uh, his career is gonna be just fine after this, after he recovers. You guys tell me down below what you think. Alright, the next physique update is very, very interesting. For those of you who think Hunter's career is at the end, I guess you are wrong, because it seems like he progressed a lot this offseason. So he posted this video, I'm gonna play it for you in a moment, but it's interesting what he says here. He says, accidentally slipped and fell into weighing 300 pounds. He says, all jokes aside, we absolutely are not trying to push my weight up right now. Truly just aiming to grow as much as possible while maintaining this body composition and keeping my digestion on point. No complaints though, I'll take it. So he was basically not even trying to get as heavy as possible. And I'm pretty sure he never was 300 pounds before. I think he was up to like 285, maybe 290. I think it was something like that. But now it's 300 pounds with a really good body composition, I gotta say. He is looking very lean. He's not even holding a lot of water. Like, this does not look fluffy at all. Like, yeah, he's not in, in contest condition, but 300 pounds, guys? That's heavy. That's big. That's heavier than Nick Walker in the offseason. And these guys are about similar height. And I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. The reason why Hunter doesn't look as impressive as Nick is because he has a gigantic head, and that's it. In proportion to the rest of his body, he, his head is enormous, so if his head was smaller, I mean normal size, he would probably look as freaky as Nick Walker, maybe not that much because he doesn't have any, he has really good symmetry, he has no standout body parts, everything is there, everything is pretty much good, like legs are big from the front and from behind, chest, back, arms, shoulders, he has everything really, relatively small waistline as well, so like he's very complete and that's why nothing is standing out, and again, I don't know what he's gonna look like when he loses all the weight, I mean his head is gonna look like insanely big, but again, this is a whole bunch of muscle guys, and if he nails conditioning, I don't know which show he's planning on doing, he needs to qualify, maybe it's gonna be something like, I don't know, Tampa Pro again, we'll see, but yeah, conditioning is amazing, 300 freaking pounds, I'm expecting an improved version of Hunter Labrador this year, I think this offseason has been one of his most successful offseasons I ever saw from him since I've been following him, so yeah, definitely an improved version of Hunter, we'll see how conditioning is gonna go though, I mean last year he nailed it for Tampa, and then after that, Texas Pro wasn't as good, and Mr. Olympia was even worse, but maybe this year they'll figure it out and nail the conditioning every time for the Mr. Olympia qualifier and for the Mr. Olympia, but again, crazy progression for sure. Up next, we got a physique update, not really a full physique update, but what we can see is looking hell of impressive. Uh, it's Carlos Thomas Jr. with this most muscular, you know, tank top, but... Hell, man, you can see the shoulders, you can see the arms, the traps, a little bit of the chest, and damn, this is looking freaky. Originally, he was supposed to compete at the Arnold Classic Brazil, and unfortunately, he had to pull out because a family member of his uh, passed away and he had to travel back to the US. He was actually in Brazil for like, I don't know, eight weeks or even more, uh, prepping for that Arnold Classic, but yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to see him over there. However, he is, as you can see, in phenomenal shape right now. I don't know which show he plans on doing. Maybe he jumps into the New York, because he looks like he absolutely can. And, I mean, bro, this is definitely one of the most impressive bodybuilders today. He is definitely in the ballpark of Rubio Mosquera, Nick Walker. Not from behind, though. His back is definitely very, very weak, but... From the front, with his freaking shoulders, and arms, and chest, and legs are even probably even more impressive. I mean, I would say also Hunter Labrada, but you know why we don't get that impression. But as far as uh, Carlos Thomas Jr., he looks insane here. I mean, I'm looking at his freaking shoulders and those arms, and damn, man, this is looking crazy. So once again, hopefully he jumps into the New York Pro, 
I definitely don't see him winning because, again, of his back, and he never really brought great conditioning to the stage. Maybe he will bring it this year because here he looks rock hard. But we'll see. I mean, he would be definitely a great addition to that crazy lineup over there. Uh, he can do it. He looks amazing, and there is still time. I mean, he can sign up by this Monday. So if he does that, that will be amazing. What do you guys think? Should he do it? What would he do if he did that show? Can he be top three? Tell me down below. All right, and finally, we got a physique update of Nathan Diasha at seven weeks out of I'm not sure what, maybe the same shows like last year, like Spain and Italy. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is in seven weeks. I, I wasn't, I didn't bother to check, but it's gonna have to be one of the European shows because of his uh, legal and travel issues. Now, the thing I see in this physique is crazy freaking improvements. He definitely looks thicker, bigger, wider than ever. Than ever for sure. I don't think Nathan Diasha was ever this big, this good. And for some time back, like two years ago, we thought his career is over. And he tore both of his biceps. But look at him now with the new coach, Stefan Kinzel. It seems like he is bringing, not just bringing him back, but bringing him back looking the best ever. Look at the legs. I don't know if Nathan ever had this kind of fullness in the legs, especially. And also like the arms and the shoulder width. Let's check out the back and, and, and look at the conditioning as well. He is pretty much... I mean, honestly, for me, this is like four weeks out conditioning. And he has seven weeks to go. So and he's freaking massive. So there isn't really much work to be done. I mean, he's already in great conditioning. Sure, he will get sharper, but I don't see him losing a lot of muscle. I mean, a lot of size. He will be pretty much this size... And I don't think Regan Grimes or anybody like that can beat him this year. After he qualifies, hopefully he will actually be able to travel to the US and compete in the Mr. Olympia because that's where he belongs. In my eyes, right now, the way he looks, I think it's definitely, I think he's definitely top 6 material. It depends on how he picks, what he brings on that day, but again, look at the improvements. Look at the legs right here. Definitely, definitely big improvements. What do you guys think? Tell us down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding content like this, guys, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.